Welcome to Thank God, probably the final Big Motor Small Play podcast ever, or at least this year. Um, I'm Buddy Bully. I'm Seth Dolby. And I'm Chuck Chase Folsom. Yep. No. Um, yeah, it is very late in the in the year, in the night, um, and it is the year of Ryan Blaney, so I wore my Kyle Petty t-shirt to commemorate it. Um Seth, do you want to say the line? What the fuck does Kyle Petty got to do with this? That was weak. It anyway, was. um, how, how's everybody doing? We're we're over a week removed from the end of the season. How 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 are we feeling? I'm glad it's over. Are we, okay, that was gonna I'm be the great. Next. I got dessert with Chuck. We got a pink lemonade and a cookie. Is that is that a some elves in a tree make that? What's that mm-hmm. saying, buddy? Oh, what wait, are no, these that's... damn things called? They're called uh, Fudge. Fudge something. Keebler. Keebler. Keebler elves is what it's called. I don't know what the fuck. Fudge the stripes. Is yeah, there you go. I, I called them fudge rounds last night and my dad. Can't say um, that. Can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it as soon as I said it. All right, we're going to have to bleep that one. All right. A Glad couple minutes in and it's already going it's downhill. Early. Okay, mm. this might be the last big motor small <laughs> episode ever um anyway yeah this is our uh i guess season review so uh seth you are glad the season's over chuck are you how are you uh you surviving the off season i don't care i still have football to watch um all right i mean in all honesty do i miss it yeah am i happy that i don't have to devote half of my week to doing coverage of stuff also yeah so I'm just going to sit back, hopefully watch the Eagles not choke this year, and I'll be fine. I um, I don't miss it. It was a long, strenuous year. And another reason I don't miss it is because I still have two more races to go to this year in the That's South true. Carolina 400 and the Thanksgiving Classic at Southern National. So, I'm not leaving. Or um, is, that the, is that the line? From what? In the office. Uh, no. Oh. No. What? Yeah, <laughs> Wolf no, of Wall Street, my guy. Mm. Oh. I don't. There is one of those. Margaret Robbie was not naked in the office. No. Well. No. I mean, I'm sure she wasn't it's... in the. She wasn't naked in the office in the Wolf of Wall Street either. But no. Um. <laughs> no. Quite a tragedy. Um, I mean, yeah. Anyway. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> we may be talking about uh, no, other movies at some point. Stay tuned. <laughs> Um, yeah. And I'm the reason that this is going to be the last Big Motor Small Blade ever. Okay. Um, it's been a long time coming. Um, but no, hopefully this won't be the last Big Motor Small Blade ever. Probably not. But on we the season, all be? Oh, sorry. On the season real quick. Uh, I don't really understand. Like, we get nine months of NASCAR every year. And then we get it. We're off for like two months and everyone's like i can't believe it i can't i miss it so much i'm like dude it's like 100 days till the daytona 500 just like chill for a minute it's also not... <laughs> also um that's just a normal thing for nascar fans to want too much of everything <laughs> yeah <laughs> like we want 50 races on the schedule with all the road courses, none of the road courses, couple dirt and, and negative dirt, and we want all the intermediates with zero short tracks plus ten short tracks. <laughs> like yeah. we don't we don't know what we want. So, I uh, mean, I, I guess the good thing is, is as a group, we're very diverse as far as what we want. We're not but really we're all that... shitty. <laughs> yeah, we all we all just but like we're do... all a big terrible shitty wonderful family kind of like this granola bar kind of shitty is that because you're fat and the granola bar is somewhat healthy dude this thing's called chocolate brownie there's nothing healthy about it okay all right (laughs) i don't know my protein bar is cookies and cream so good shit what the hell's in this peaches and cream peaches peach in georgia (laughs) No, no. <laughs> cream is an underrated Talladega Nights quote. I don't know what oat blend is, about. but it's in here. Shut uh, up, Chuck. I'm looking forward to my rewatch of Talladega Nights. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, we oh dude, and we can talk about Kevin Harvick's house. Yeah, we can. Dude, Kevin Harvick bought the Ricky Bobby house. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> like, that's, that's pretty cool. awesome. awesome. Like you said, buddy, I hope they got that stereo issue fixed. I, I I really hope they do. We all know Kevin. He likes to party. I can't Kevin, wait to Kevin just walks out in a tuxedo t shirt. So should we spoil our plans? I think we can at this point. I think it's pretty yeah, much so solid. So Seth and I have have so many plans for the off season. Whether they come to fruition is to be determined. Um, we have an idea to do some movie review, I guess, some yeah. uh, red letter media esque um, videos on racing movies. Talladega Nights obviously will be one, and that'll be basically a big game of I Spy and I spying things that are in now Kevin Harvick's house. Um, <laughs> so that and, you know, obviously other racing movies, cars, <laughs> rush, you know, um, and even bad ones like driven. <laughs> um, definitely so, bad ones. Those are yeah, be definitely ones. bad <laughs> ones. Um, and then probably some classics like last American hero, if we can find it and start a race. Um, it's movies. Days neither one of us. Has seen I was going to say days of thunder. Yeah, yeah, we've seen well, that, but yeah. Everyone's seen Days of Thunder and Days, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm really, I'm looking forward to Last American Hero. That should be fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I want to say, uh, let's let's save the other idea we have. We'll, we'll yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll save get, that we'll one. Get around to that one. Um, but anyway, uh, let's just cut right to the chase. <sighs> Chase is right over here, actually. Yeah, dude, dude, I was gonna I, say. I started laughing because as soon I, as I, said... I I passed the Days of Thunder barn like four times a week, and I put a thought to it maybe once a month. It's kind of weird to think that that's. We like need to go. Yeah, we where do. I live. Like a... I live here, so it's like well, I see that barn. And I'm just like, oh, I don't know. Oh, well, we need to it's, find out. Yeah, it's literally like not far off the road at all you can see it from the old advanced auto parts parking lot which has moved across the street now in mooresville but okay we'll we'll look into that a little bit make sure we're not gonna yeah, get we'll shot it, at and... we'll i might could go ask okay. because every year they do like a christmas tree lot on the property and a pumpkin lot and i think they have some from farmers market up right now so i might could go ask I don't want to ask. I want to like risk my life doing it. Okay. Well, Chuck, definitely me. ask. Uh, Buddy is not yeah. in charge of our life and death. Me. Wait, hang on, here. hang on, hang on. Has anybody has anybody seen G Fed on TikTok? Uh, no. What he basically that? he walks on to oh, every yeah. college. Oh yeah. And he can find. Yeah. Yeah. And just I love the way he does it. He doesn't hop fences. He doesn't go through trespassing signs. He just goes to open or lock doors or unlocked doors or gates or whatever and like we did obviously that. we can't really do that in racetracks but like that would that remind that kind of reminded me going to the barn and just kind of seeing how we feel see we, if we well, can if we, we know we, someone who did that at Wilkesboro before it got revived yeah tyler definitely almost got shot yeah um that's a underrated moment because shout out to hannah because that was like soon after they started dating and like they almost got shot in the middle of the North Wilkesboro Speedway, and um, she's still with them today. So <laughs> they are married. So shout out to them. Um, was it by also, the one dude that was like living on the property the and guard. technically, yeah, technically probably. listed it as an employee of the property for like twenty years while it was just sitting there because he lived there? Yeah, Pepperidge Farm himself. Um, it was funny because when I went there, I parked like right in front of like his residence and then just walked around. Like he drove by me. Like he was like, "Okay, I guess he's not in, so I don't really care." <laughs> like he never said anything to me, but <laughs> it was funny. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I don't know. I guess Tyler's more threatening than you are. Well, Tyler was also breaking in. That's probably part of it. I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to. Well, actually, we'll have to get that story from Tyler on the yeah. podcast. Um, we also have something playing with Tyler. Um over the off season we got we got a lot of fun stuff planned so stay tuned for nothing um so let's uh, let's uh cut to the chuck um i'm still right was 2023 a good season just let's just get as broad as we can and just open the floor for discussion so is this like the good race poll it either was or wasn't there's no middle ground um that you can't do that like okay so, I think it was 
I think it was good. It was all right. Bro, oh, okay. All right, cool. Open the floor for discussion. Well, Let's I figured we'd go around and say whether we thought it was good and then dive Oh, okay, in. all right. That's um, what I figured. Chuck. Definition of mid. Yeah. Mid, <clears throat> wow. Yeah. I thought it was serviceable, probably unforgettable, but serviceable. Okay, so... Or, no, not unforgettable, forgettable. Forgettable. Yes. Yeah, that is, like, the one thing. So, I, I'll... I'll i'll definitely concede that i thought it was solid enough it was definitely top heavy like i got that i definitely stole that from the teardown but um a lot of the really interesting stuff happened in the early first half of the season yeah um obviously the big off track stuff happened chase elliott alex bowman that other guy um we had the big on track stuff with like shane van gisbergen and all the international guys coming in that was fun that was mostly first half of the season um a lot of up and down racing for the first half of the season but definitely more memorable and then it kind of got more standard toward the end of the season which i'm kind of a purist so that doesn't really bother me (laughs) but i think like you're definitely right in the top heavy um portion or uh top heavy comment because (laughs) as bonkers as last year was we came out the gate just as crazy this year. I mean, and we didn't even mention all the penalties that happened in the beginning of the year. Yeah. The fucking war that Hendrick started with NASCAR, yeah. like, and NASCAR started with them, the big change in the appeals and all that. Like, I mean, that was that was all we were talking about at the yeah. beginning of the season. And it was saving the fact that we had significantly worse racing at the beginning of the year than we did last year. So, well, okay, it wasn't as hyped. I guess. Yeah. Um, Chase so Briscoe yeah. got a hundred and something point penalty for running dog shit last at Charlotte. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Chase Briscoe got docked like 125 points for running behind D- BJ McLeod at Charlotte. That that should be a damn nominee for the y'all remember that. <laughs> like <laughs> <award>. what? <laughs> That was pretty funny to me, honestly. Like, yeah, I'm, that, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to forget that. Dude, yeah, that's. <laughs> That's t- that is that is how do you uh, cheat and run slower than BJ McLeod? Like, yeah. I mean, no yeah, offense to BJ, is, uh, we love BJ, but like, that is, that's bad. That is quintessential Chase Briscoe. Um, I don't think Chase Briscoe built the part and put it on the car. I think he did. Think no, he did? but it, it fits every nickname that one of the three of us I can't remember which one has come up with for him. Yeah. Um, was it better than last year, this season? It was less grading on me. Put it that way. Okay. I mean, what defined grading on you? Like irritating. Elaborate. Last year just pissed me off in every way possible. Same. And this it. year did not piss me off in every way possible. I don't know what else you want me to say about that. I mean, we examples fixed, so- of what pissed you off and what how we, we fixed okay, it this so year. we fixed <laughs> like, a lot of we fixed a lot of the parts issues okay which yeah which subsequently led to less batshit and saying racing or races not races not quotes but not <laughs> racing but races it yeah. led to less less crazy shit happening on racetracks um but i i vastly prefer it that way i would rather just run the race and however it happens it happens that is that is definitely prefer preferable to me Um, and it just, it did what I expected it. It it did. It felt like the natural progression because yeah, Um, because we all knew that we all knew that the teams were going to get a hold of it and the big teams were going to get a hold of it. And that's, that's what happened. Hendrick got a hold of it. Gibbs got a hold of it. And that's what we saw. And I don't, I like, I don't mind that. That, that. that's what kind of what I want to see. Chuck? I mean, like, I'm with Seth that didn't piss me off every single week. Um, and I will say the short tracks were at least, like, 
tolerable. Like it, it wasn't like Which ones. I would call them marginally <laughs> better, but they were like I wouldn't. Call okay, them when I say tolerable, I mean I wasn't like fuming mad i'm just gonna go walk away and do something else like i would at least sit there and be miserable and watch it instead of <laughs> be miserable and walk away so there's that i don't know like i was scrolling through the for something that we're going to talk about in a little bit i was scrolling through the list of races trying to pick my answer and every race i came to i was just like yeah yeah uh, and I got to like, I never got, I got to maybe two that I was like, oh yeah, I remember that. That was fun to watch. And then I stopped and thought about it. I was like, man, it's kind of sucked. Like there was, I mean, it was, wasn't bad, but there was nothing that in 10 years I'm going to be like, except for maybe one race that I'm going to be like, oh my God, do you remember watching that? That was crazy. So yeah, that's that why I'm the- just like definition yeah. of mid. Cause like it, it's just, it's here. It, it came, it went, it's move on to next year. There's nothing special about it to me. That is the one thing like as even as someone who was so completely over NASCAR by the end of last season, it's, it was infuriating, but I will remember that every, basically oh, yeah. every moment of that for probably like the rest of my life, unless I get dementia. So like, that is yeah that's the one thing like while this season didn't (laughs) piss me off it's not going to be as memorable for that reason um so i think the first two years of next gen are like dual races that we 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 see one just absurd one where everybody wrecks the money team gets in and there's a photo finish at the stripe and then we see one that's just the regular drivers just doing the damn thing and the open car that everybody picks to make it makes it. And that was this year. Uh, it, it is last year. I think I had more fun with last year. Well, hold on. I think I did have more fun, but it was also just more polarizing than this year. And this year was, like you said, the natural progression. And I think we needed it. You know, we needed the yin to the yang that was 2022. Um, And I think next year, we'll, I think next year, I'm willing to bet we'll see a kind of happy medium of the first two years of next gen. Yeah. Cause I mean, we're getting two new, we're getting two new cars. We're going to get probably a, pretty drastic new short track package so yeah yeah, we'll probably end up with with the shakeup we're hoping for for that one i'll add to the duel analogy and just say yeah one of the duels they always are side by side somebody wrecks and then in the other duel they run single file the entire time yeah and you're just sitting there you're just sitting there watching them like Come on, do something. That's how I felt about this season, honestly. Do something. Especially at the end. Especially at the end of this year. It was like, for as insane as the first part of this year was, it was not much of anything happened. In the playoffs, especially. There was that one guy that just completely fell apart. But that. Well, yeah that's the most interesting thing that happened like yeah well yeah. pretty much the most thing. interesting thing was true x just completely shitting the bed and that's the thing that's only magnified because of the playoffs like if we didn't have playoffs that would just be that would be overlooked because it would a lot of th- not it would be more overlooked than it was because i i've watched a lot of old races and i've watched a couple like old seasons like all the way through and um there's been guys that have led the points you know and the final handful of races they just kind of fell off and it's not kind of it's not a big storyline it's just kind of the natural progression but now that we have the playoffs there's a def- a definitive breaking point and definitive like checkpoints in the season I'm going to disagree with you there because I can only think of one time when we entered the chase 
playoffs, whatever. And there was a guy that had been hands down the fastest car, especially for the second half of the regular season. And everybody had that guy circled as one. Everybody had that guy as one of the two championship favorites. And then from the moment the green flag dropped in the first race of the chaser playoffs, they completely fell off a cliff. I can only think of one time that happened. It was Kyle Busch in 08, and everyone talked about it. There's been, you're right, there's well, been guys why. that that, well, that Chuck, led the points. Well, Chuck, well, well, Chuck, if you would listen, that's why I said it's magnified by the chase in the playoffs. <laughs> well, we okay, that's not. The Winston Cup points, like I just said. I thought you said just the playoffs. Okay, so we'll see. You know, I wasn't well, alive right. then, playoffs. so. Okay, I'm sorry. You were I alive in 2008, Chuck. Yeah. Also, yeah, I was also about to say. No, Chuck I was talking about ever, the Winston um, Cup points. Was Kyle Busch even the points leader in the Winston Cup format? Should have been Edwards, what? wouldn't it? I think he was, but it wasn't. Was it Hold wasn't... on. Now I'm lost. Huh. Wait, are I, we talking well, about? I don't know. I'm. Are we talking about like the win- actual when the Winston Cup format was used or like hypotheticals of every know. season because yeah. if we're talking when it was actually used i was not alive um that's what i was about to say yeah i was uh, i was about to say so maybe maybe chuck's to you when were you born oh four. Oh my god oh fuck dude you weren't even alive for winston cup no holy shit the first year first i was grade. alive was kurt bush yeah, I just blew Buddy's mind. Dude, boot him off the call. What That's the just fuck? Wrong. How you guys know bring, this. How, how are we supposed to bring Winston back if he wasn't even here? You guys know this. You've I known forgot. this. It just I mean, look, I did, but like I keep thinking you're like never mind, I'm not gonna say that. Anyway, um I think you're older than you are. Yeah. Well, it's definitely the mustache. I'm just kidding. Anyway, um, um but but I don't know, because there's been other times when a guy led the points, like off the top of my head, I can think technically Carl was the points leader when the chase started in 2013, and then he fell off a cliff and nobody said anything about it. But really the reason nobody said anything about it is because, yeah, he was the points leader at the end of the regular season, but it was like, huh, he that didn't... guy's the points leader? He didn't really light the world on fire. Kyle Busch my point, did. My point was. And Martin there... did this year. My point mainly was there's so many people that penciled Martin Truex as the championship favorite and then also were just bamboozled that like and felt he was almost robbed by not making the final four when Yeah, I don't understand that. When he really just he he peaked and then dropped off like a rock. And it's like he doesn't deserve <laughs> to win the championship. He wouldn't have come nowhere close had it been any other format yeah no so, in the regular chase format he would have 2008 finished last. kyle bush is a good comparison he would have finished last just like kyle did in 2008 yeah um so anyway what are um actually i'll save that for the end um do we want to get into our awards sure all right these are these are the what do we call them a couple years ago? The Smalley Awards. Hang on, y'all are gonna have to go first. I forgot that part. The what? The Smalley Awards. Because it's Big Motor Small Blade. The Smallies. Smallies. Oh <laughs> God. The, uh, I, y'all sent like nine thousand snaps, so I, I forgot where we were at. <laughs> anyway, go on. Go ahead. We spent so much time getting ready for this and I was Seth- at work. Except not ready, dude. We spent like forty-five minutes by the from just being on the Zoom call. <laughs> oh, God bless America. What were you writing down? <laughs> all the other shit you put in after all the fucking uh, snaps. Wait, what? Yeah, what? Hold on. <laughs> what, dude? Sex I got is... sundress, dumbass, most over. Okay, hang on. Yeah, you have it. Like, you have it. Like, that's what you we're have the list. About. Don't don't uh, spill the whole list here. An idiot. <laughs> we're starting with sundress and dumbass. These are the awards. Oh. <laughs> Let me go first for dumbass real quick. 
you know, I'm having a blonde moment. I haven't technically been blonde in a while, but I was born blonde, so. <laughs> roll okay, it. um, sundress. I'm gonna go first. I'm Kevin sure. Harvick. Yeah. Because, duh. Like, one of the most impactful and impressive careers in NASCAR history. So, how how do you how does he not sundress material in his final season? Okay, so I wrote that down. Knew you were gonna say that, so of I course. went with the real sundress, Shane Van, Van Gisbergen. Gisbergen. Shane Van Gisbergen. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm. Uh, if I have to elaborate, you've been under a rock. The man, the man did the thing. He is Shane Van Gisbergen is him, and I'm excited to see him come back and do the thing again. Let's go, Shane. Chuck. So I think I, with going third, still have the third best option. My sundress is Chris Busher. Because who the hell had yeah. Chris Busher winning three races this year on their bingo card? Because yeah. I didn't. Shout out to that guy for finally reaching his full potential. I'm happy for I him. I like Chris Busher. I don't think, I don't think, I it think is he's either. <laughs> well, I'm glad RFK is allowing him to yes. get to that point. Because he's... Chris Busher is a certified good guy, so I'm glad he's I'm glad he's having success there. I I got to say I'm impressed with our first three awards given out. Um, Kevin we Harvick, did really good. Kevin Harvick, Christopher Busher, and Shane Van Gisbergen are the sundresses of the year. We will get your awards to you in a timely manner, Kevin. We know where you live now, so we can mail yours. <laughs> Um, I'm not paying the shipping all the way to New Zealand. So Shane, you're going to have to come get it. Um, and Chris, I don't know if he gets mailed to his farm. So in prosper, Texas in pro. Yeah. Well, he's um, got one in North Carolina, but we could just send it. We could just send it to prosper. And, you know, there's only 30,000 people there. They'll figure it out. They'd be like, yeah, Oh, exactly. that Chris Busher. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wait, how many people are in prosper, Texas, Seth? You had the number. I think it's thirty four thousand. No, no, it's like forty thousand now. Rick Allen used to oh, bet. Chris Busher Rick boom. Allen. Yeah, Rick Maybe. Allen is just yeah. wrong. Yeah. All right. So, dumbass of the year. Here we go. Or should we save that for last? Yeah, we can. I yeah, have. Okay, save, so I'll just save warn the dumbass you. Dumbass of the year award for last. I'll just okay. warn you. Uh, my dumbass is like a three-parter, but I'm not going to go on a rant about that's any fine. of that. That's fine. That's fine. That's okay. fine. Okay, so we have our sundress of the year. All right. Who is our most overrated driver of the year? Go Can Chuck. I go first? Go, Chuck. The guy that won the championship. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Blaney. Casey Kane <laughs> car- reincarnated himself. Call me crazy, but like the dude had maybe – the worst statistical season of his career and he won a championship the only thing that changed like you said on the last As time God we did it, brian france intended it <laughs> the only thing that changed is like you said before he just happened to win the races at the right time this year like that's it he yeah. had a statistically better year last year and the year like i, I think his rookie year might be the only time he's had a worse season. I'd be hard year. pressed to, be, to call him overrated, though. And the reason being, I've seen like two social media posts about Ryan Blaney since he won the championship. I'm just from you, NASCAR. You know Which, what I'm getting at? It's like, oh my god, Ryan world. Blaney's the champion. But like, yeah, hang on, real quick, you brought that everyone up. in NASCAR's office forgot Ryan Blaney won the championship three days after. It Did happened. they forget how popular Ryan Blaney is? Dude, like, yes. This this has got to be the biggest fucking blunder from NASCAR media ever. ever. Like, holy shit, dude! Like, it doesn't have to. You don't have to go full like Chase Elliott mode on it, but Jesus, like, at why least not? Kyle Larson, at least Kyle why Larson not? level. Yeah, I mean, you I know how many you know how many people, how many women, what, what your wife, girlfriend, and sister, uh, <laughs> and mother. Yeah, I mean. You know how many people I know girlfriend. that knew no nothing. <laughs> you know how many people I've known that knew basically nothing about NASCAR, but they show up to the racetrack and they see Ryan Blaney, and either the guy is like he's a man's man, or he's like he's hot, 
Um, Which he is. Or the girl, or a girl is like, he's hot, I'm picking him. Like, people who know nothing about racing are drawn to Ryan Blaney and just who he is. And say what you want about the man's season and he's a perfect poster child for nascar and they blew it they blew it completely oh. choked that one yeah that one yeah. that sucked <clears throat> yeah. um but i still stand by what i said that's facts totally fair. uh seth do you want to go i do most overrated driver this season was william byron yes <laughs> <laughs> that was like, my other one i'm sorry my man, the not my man. The man won like four races in overtime. The boy. The, the child won like <laughs> four races in overtime. Like holy shit, I'm not impressed. Okay, I don't care. I don't care that he was there when it counted. I'm sorry, you shouldn't have to plan to be there when it counts after the race is supposed to conclude. This is dumb, and we need to stop acting like this is impressive. He did win a Say fifth race off of a back. rain delay, so... Say it for the people in the back. Oh, yeah. One, one was a rain delay. Sorry. <laughs> so there's five. There's five right there Dude, out of his six. William Byron's 2023 season is the most overrated shit ever. And people... I saw something today. Or it was it was the teardown. They said, William Byron, I mean, he won the most races and he would have won the regular season championship if he hadn't gotten that penalty. He got the penalty. They cheated. Why is this an asterisk? It happened. Like they, like I. And don't it wouldn't have helped him that. win the championship anyway. Oh, well, the regular season championship. I mean the regular, the actual championship. It wouldn't have helped him win that anyway. Yeah, yeah. So I just, it yes, I did. I did a TikTok on it, and it was. It is he. He's no different than Alex Bowman. Alex Bowman could have the same year next year and we would it we would have an uproar about it and we and did you know last year 2021 thing. yeah i would say the same thing yeah like, it, no disrespect exactly. like he did what he needed to do in the moment but i'm not impressed i said this i said this because only 204 guys have ever won in the nascar cup series so it's a hard thing to fucking do so you can't discount the man for doing it because he does have an uncanny ability to be there at the end and seize the opportunity. But let's not act like he went out and just molly whopped them all year. Yeah. <clears throat> so I concur if you did not um, gather you that. pick up on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so congratulations to our Ryan Blaney. You could set our Smalley for overrated driver of the year right inside the cup of your bill france cup and you can laugh at it because we don't have a bill france cup <laughs> and, and uh and this you do fair. um yeah. william byron next to those six trophies five of which are debatable you can put your smally for most uh, overrated driver of the year yep All what's right. yours Mine is he, William Byron. He just well. said he concurs. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> so, William Byron. You I, get, I had Byron as my second on my list in case y'all went before William Byron me. got seven trophies this year. He got six. No, he got – no, I'm sorry. He got eight trophies this year. Six from winning races, and he got two smallies. So, congratulations, William. <laughs> All right. Most underrated driver. I was kind of struggling with this one. Um so I went with AJ Allmendinger. Colleg had a down year, and AJ went out and won, I believe, what, three or four Xfinity races this season, won a cup race, ran pretty competitively when Colleg was able to give him a was decent... in contention for the 16th spot in the playoffs near the end of That's it. very true. I forgot about that. Yeah. Was close to getting in the playoffs, won a cup race this season at, at, at King AJ the first. Um, uh, so... It ha to me, it had to be A.J. Allmendinger. Okay. Chuck? Um, I already used Chris Buescher. So, I'm going to say his teammate, Brad Keselowski. Okay. Because Brad actually had a really good year. Yeah. He and did. he had he had a really good year. I saw a stat during the Phoenix race. It was like 
most top tens in the next gen era without winning a race, which I mean, it's only been two years, but yeah, he's a been, lot of guys he's have won. a lot of guys. Have won. <laughs> he's been up there a lot. Yeah. And he was up there, especially since like Bristol last year on, they've been yeah. really good. And he had, I almost felt bad for him because he had so many opportunities to win races this year and just things didn't go his way for no fault like of their own. Of laps. No fault yeah. of their own at all. Well, like they continued to mention on DBC about every week, all the races that Busher won, Brad could have won. Oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Brad honestly had, and I already, Chris Busher was by sundress, but Brad probably had a more, at least consistent season. Like, Brad was fast all year long, really. And then Chris, they found it in the summer, and it went from there. Yeah. And then everybody kind of forgot that Brad was having a really good year and was ahead of Chris in points by a lot. Brad did kind of blow that one in Atlanta, though. He could, I mean, he, he did that one. But Brad was like a good bit ahead of Chris in points for most of the year. And then Chris went on a tear in the um, end of the year. So, but yeah, Brad is last guy underrated. All right. My most underrated. Everyone talked about Carson Hosovar and his cup performance. I want to give a shout out to Josh Berry because he was not as flashy as Carson has far, but he had flashes of greatness. He had at least a couple top tens that I remember. Sorry. I didn't get the exact stats. He finished second at Richmond. Um, and that was what his fourth cup start. Something I along those lines. I believe so. Something around there. Um, and he also, raced his way into the NASCAR Cup Series All-Star Race. So, I mean, short track ace aside, I feel like that that needs to be some – there needs to be some notoriety given to at least that. Um, and I think Josh Berry and Cup was an underrated success story. Um, and it also is underrated <laughs> um, for Stuart Haas Racing as well because he got all that experience on someone else's dime. Very true. So Josh Berry Cup is going to be mine. Um, so congratulations to Josh Berry, uh, Brad Keselowski, and AJ Omdir. You get the smallies for most underrated driver of this year. All right. Cool. Um, bitchin' race. The most bitchin' race of 2023. I want to go first. Okay. Because it's my turn to go first. The Chicago Street Race, hands right. down, the one maybe maybe the best race I've ever been to in my entire life. Yeah, I that like, is the most not, for for someone who attended. That is the most memorable thing I've done this season. <laughs> that, that's, that I think I I think I'm pretty confident in saying that's the that is the best race I've ever been to in my entire life. I've been to probably uh, um, nearly 150 cup races. And that is top of the heap for me. Yeah. Seth? Um, I'm going to go with my favorite race that's not returning next season. Um, it actually wasn't my favorite race of the season, but damn it, I'm so upset that it's not coming back that I made it my most bitching race of the season. And that is the Bristol Dirt Race. Next year, when I'm watching the most mid-ass concrete brace in the 33-degree... Oh, Chuck just muted his microphone, so he's upset with me. Um, but yeah, when I'm watching the most mid-ass concrete race in the 35-degree weather at, at Bristol, I'm going to be I'm gonna be sitting there with my I want dirt back sign. And yeah, Bristol dirt race. Rest in peace. <laughs> Rest in power. I yeah I, I I agree with that too. Chuck, I'm never acknowledging that sign, ever. That's fine. That's fine. We don't need you to. <laughs> so I have two answers for the actual race. Homestead. Homestead was a great race, honestly, it was, it was and it was great. by far the best race of the playoffs. Um, that wasn't that hard. Yeah, really, not much competition, but. I, there's really not much to say. Homestead's always great. There's always top to bottom. You could race anywhere. 
There's always passing. There's always tire wear. That one guy might get mentioned in a little bit. He did something pretty dumb. So that made it entertaining too. Um, And my other one, I'm going to give a mention to it. Not for the race itself, because the race itself honestly blew. But uh, shout out to North Wilkesboro for the atmosphere. That was yeah. I didn't I didn't go to Chicago, so I won't speak yes or no on that. But for me, that was the best atmosphere of a race I have ever been to. Just to it, see NASCAR and Cup cars back at and obviously I wasn't alive when they were there, but I could you could just feel the you could just feel the the history and just feel how big the moment was just by sitting in the stands there. You knew I wasn't around when they were here before, but this is a really big deal. And I hope it stays that way, even though they repaved it. So if Wilkesboro could have been half the race Chicago was, I think Wilkesboro probably would have, would have taken it for me because the atmosphere of that was was uh, like you said it was unreal like you could it was pal it was palpable and you could feel no matter if you were live in 96 watched nascar in 96 knew what nascar was in that exact moment or back in 1996 yeah you you understood it was very very clear what the moment was and i feel like in a different way that was that was chicago and that was chicago was just this all hope was lost at three o'clock in the afternoon, the yeah. day of Chicago. And by some sort of miracle, we ended up getting that race in. And it was, the, <laughs> it was not the shit show. Everybody thought it was. It was one of the most legit and most pure NASCAR races I've ever watched in my life. And we saw one of the greatest stories in the history of the sport in Shane Van Gisbergen winning in his first start. And that's why, for me, it was the most bitchin' race of 2023. And the atmosphere, too, Yeah, the day before was unbelievable. I, I do think if you if you expand it a little bit and take it take Wilkes Pro not just at on the Sunday, but you take the whole week into account, yeah. then mm-hmm. I think that that illustrates it better obviously it's not exactly the question um or the award but yeah if you want to do most bitch in week yeah <laughs> I, I i would probably concur and say wilkesboro and it will probably stay that way going forward as long as they keep it the way it is exactly um so julie geezy you can come and accept the award on chicago street races behalf for the most bitch and race of the year for me um Marcus Smith. Um, I'm not giving it to you since you yeah, took my baby away. Yeah, you can <laughs> um, you could trade a dump <laughs> truck load of Bristol dirt for your Smalley Award to Seth Dolby. Don't and do then, it, Marcus. Don't do it. And then <laughs> I'll pay the shipping to send you mine. Don't don't take that. I just imagine a dump truck pulling up the Seth's house in the middle of <laughs> bumfuck Gainesville, <laughs> North Carolina. Buddy, Jesus fucking Christ, and. And just it's just this heaping pile of Bristol dirt, and everybody's like, "That's an eyesore." And Seth's just got a throne carved out of the of the dirt. And every time you pull up to Seth's house, he's just sitting there, just sipping some shine and <laughs> and reminiscing. Like he's got a he's got an old boot uh. tube TV with the rabbit ears, watching old Bristol dirt races from back in nineteen two thousand twenty one. <laughs> just having a grand old time oh man um and then also congratulations to homestead miami for just being a bitch in racetrack and getting i'm shot. shocked so i originally wrote down coca-cola 600 and i was like nah someone else will say that you know i thought that too that's why i didn't write it down <laughs> it, the coke 600 honorable mention great race yes. honorable mention for sure yeah um all right so naturally from this, we go to the worst race of the season. Chuck, what was the worst race of the season? Half of them. <laughs> <laughs> Narrow it down. Okay. Uh, what do you want me to say? Um, One of them? Let's see. The second Richmond race sucked. The first Martinsville race sucked. Bristol Night race sucked. 
Uh, the first Atlanta race sucked. Actually, the second Martinsville race sucked too. Sonoma sucked. Watkins Glen. Su- I mean, I could go on and on and on. So I'm going to pick two that pissed me off the most. Um, Atlanta won because the only thing I remember from that race is one line worked at a time. It was either you ran the bottom and the, everybody ran the bottom and you couldn't go up, or then they all ran the middle and then nobody could go to the bottom. And the f- four Fords ran at the front for however many miles that race was this year. I think it was 400. And, like, that's what it was until they'd wreck. And then they'd try again. And then it just it just sucked. There was nothing good about it. Um, and Sonoma, because one car could pass. One car. And you know what? That was a lot of races this year. But I just remember that one, and it just made me so mad because it's like, it's a road course. Like, Why? It's there's even opportunities for people to mess up. And in this car, you can't mess up. So there was one car that could pass and it just happened to be the guy that won the race. Shout out Martin Truex Jr. But yeah, I could go on and on. Half of them sucked. Okay. So, all right. So I'm not breaking any new ground. Chuck already told mine. Atlanta won. While not the worst race I've ever attended. That was Martinsville one, 2022. Um, holy fuck was i bored during this race <laughs> like it was just two, a miserable day too to begin with just I, i'm even gonna take all that out just watching cars just sit there and run side by side like it's a damn pace laps for 400 miles unless eric amarola blows a tire in the lead like dude like just decided not to pit just shoot me. I'm the like, only one who thinks ever all of these Atlanta races since we went to Super Speedway, except for the f- uh, summer one this year, they all run together. They're basically the same race. Yeah, yeah. like I can't. There's very few. It's a 200 mile an hour traffic, traffic jam. There's I mean, I think I think I both summer races. I think both summer races were better than both spring races, but yeah. Well, that's because now we don't have a summer race. We have a winter race and a fall race, pretty much. Well, I mean, it'll oh, still be hot Atlanta, in Atlanta. Atlanta yeah. in the summer is or in uh, September's definitely gonna I definitely know. gonna be a summer race. It'll still be hot. But anyway, yeah. yeah, that was just. Have you ever been to Darlington? <laughs> like, in the Southern Five Hundred, it's hot. Yeah. Um, so mine is Watkins Glen. Just because, one, nothing happened. Two, one guy just dominated the whole thing. And three, it was, there was a lot of races that I watched this year. And, like, after it was over, I'm like, man, that wasn't a good race. Watkins Glen is about the only one this year that just actively pissed me off during the race. And because of a plethora of things, because it was... Chase Elliott running 13th, and all we talked about was, is he going to win this race? Um, It was, you couldn't pass to save your life. It was William Byron, who might be the most boring person on the circuit, leading the entire thing. And it was, let's see how far in the bumfuck Egypt, in the Finger Lakes region of Watkins Glen, we can go off the curbs and into the runoff to, you know, make sure that skill is in a... uh, isn't a factor in this race so Watkins Glen for me and also on top of that it brought back stage cautions <laughs> at road courses also no it, <laughs> oh yeah yes it did yeah yeah that was another thing Wait, shout out, makes shout it out even to, worse uh, in hindsight <laughs> yeah shout out to uh Phoenix one and the Charlotte Roval you both suck too just wanted to throw those in there yeah yeah okay. um so yeah, congratulations or um or uh, fuck you is in order to Watkins Glen, um, the Atlanta the first Atlanta race and Sonoma. Congratulations, um you guys get the worst race of 2023 award, worst three races of uh 2023 award. Yep. Yep. All right. Oh, um, right. Uh, Thank you all three for wasting a combined 12 hours of my life. Yeah. Um, well, at least Watkins Glen was quick. 
<laughs> yeah. This is true. So, more like 10 hours. Excuse yeah. me. It was a two yeah. hour race. Underrated bitch in <laughs> race of the year, Indianapolis. Yeah. 100%. Um, let's go. Um, let's go to this one and then we'll go to y'all remember this. All right. Next one. Dale Jr.'s Oh Fuck Award. <laughs> I forgot we I said we should do this. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Dale Jr. Oh Fuck Moment Award. Um, do we all have the same one? I picked a different one just because we all had the same one. It's probably so, going to be an honorable mention because there's a pretty odd. All right, let's all give it an honorable mention, but we all know what the what the real Oh Fuck Moment is. Chuck, what's your honorable mention? So my honorable mention, Seth can uh, agree with me on this one because we both witnessed it live. Uh, we're, you know, we're just sitting there at Charlotte on the exit of turn four. And then we look down and the 11 cars coming straight at us <laughs> because the nine car just hooked him. And we're like, as he's hitting the wall directly in front of us, like maybe 10 rows down, we're me, him and Aaron are all like, oh, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> there's Denny Hamlin. So, yeah, that's my honorable mention of the year. All right. Yep. Seth, what's your honorable mention? All right. So that was going to be my honorable mention, but I'll pick a different one. My honorable mention, oh, fuck moment was when I saw Kyle Larson trying to right rear hook Ryan Priest down the front straightaway at Bristol <laughs> Dirt. And I was like, is he really that dumb? Oh, fuck. He really is that dumb. <laughs> And then he didn't do it and fucked up and wrecked himself. And I was just like, yeah, yeah, he kind of deserved that, Kyle. Fucking dumbass. I, t I tell you what, I didn't think something you knew was 100% like undeniably gonna happen could be an oh fuck moment. But Kyle Larson and Ross Chastain wrecking each other in turn one at Darlington on that restart. Hey. We all knew it was going to happen, yeah. and I still stood up and said, oh, fuck, <laughs> when, when that happened. Really? I, I said something that used that same word, but wasn't that same sentence. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the definite Dale Earnhardt Jr. Oh, fuck moment of the year is oh, Ryan fuck. Priest flipping at <laughs> Daytona. Um because I think we all jumped up and did exactly that when that happened. The worst part for me was the suspense of knowing that somehow, some way, Ryan Priest almost died, and I couldn't tell you guys that for like five hours. That was yeah. the worst part for me. We knew it was okay. We didn't. Know we it knew was it was okay. okay. We We're not yeah. sitting here waiting for impending injury or death. Yeah, no. we knew it was okay, and so when it happened. Um, I still haven't seen a dime of that money from uh betting that Chase Briscoe was involved in the wreck. You did not bet that he was involved, you bet that he was the one, yeah. You <laughs> bet that he was the wreck. I still deserve partial money for that, but yeah, obviously, what did we even that, bet? We didn't bet any money, I don't think we bet anything. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's obviously the uh, the moment of the year that made you go, oh, fuck. um. So yeah. All right, y'all remember this. The y'all uh, remember this moment. <laughs> let's throw let's throw some out there. Go ahead. This will be a free for all kind of. Yeah, so I got a couple. Um, lost in the Kyle Larson Ross Chastain drama at Darlington was the fact that like Martin Truex Jr. straight up wrecked himself off of other people's cars <laughs> twice in that race. I think it was oh, Ross. Yeah. I think it was Ross that like he just drove in the left door of into turn yeah. three coming to the end of stage two and he wrecked himself there. Yep. And then I don't remember who was running fourth at the time, but the Tony restart. Okay. So the restart before Ross and Kyle wrecked each other. The only reason that restart happened is because Truex turned himself off the nose of Joey Logano. So Martin Truex Jr. Ran out of talent at Darlington twice. Yeah. Um, my Here's one. William Byron's flashing like uh break light at the clash does anybody they, remember that i do remember that but like a bunch of guys did that at short tracks this year truex Dude. did it at martinsville too did did, did well, yeah. hold on. the reason I, I say this one is because everybody in the vip media suite in at the clash was like what the fuck is william byron doing <laughs> and then it took us all so long to be like 
oh yeah, and they run brake lights here. We're like, what kind of shit is Hendrick Foley? <laughs> Uh, um, I think I texted you that. I was like, "Do you see Byron?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seth, what's uh, what's your what's another? I'm sorry, buddy. Y'all remember when Kevin Harvick was leading at Atlanta, and Buddy Chase? You're not going to remember this. Buddy turns around and goes, "Oh, just in time for or what?" Hold on, I'm gonna let me get it right. All right, yeah, you do it. I sit. I was sitting. That Harvick was battling for the lead at Atlanta. And I, I looked at Seth and I said, that's all I want out of this season. I just want to see Kevin lead one lap in person. And he leads the lap. And as soon as he led that lap, I turn around to Seth and I go, now this is where Ross wrecks him. And, and in no the middle sooner, of Ross no and wrecks than him. I, no sooner that I could get that sentence out of my mouth, Seth goes, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and we turn around and Kevin Harvick has wrecked off the front nose of Ross Chastain. <laughs> yes, I remember that. Yeah, I figured you would. But <laughs> um, y'all remember Daniel Hemrick almost flipping into the catch fence at Talladega this year? Dude, yeah. I forgot. I did forget about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll kind of obviously we haven't forgotten but definitely like daytona too when we were sitting there and i was like oh this has been a pretty good race probably because i haven't eaten shit yet and as i said <laughs> shit you two were like oh there goes blaney <laughs> oh yeah that was uh that was <laughs> we just have impeccable timing apparently we, do. we really do have impeccable timing um seth you got another one um I, all right, if you don't have one, I have a couple more. Y'all remember that dumbass CGI lap they did at Daytona? With all oh, the, God, that was this uh, year. That was uh, <laughs> narrated by Trace Atkins. Oh, my God. What? During pre-race of the Daytona 500, they had a bunch of, like, CGI cars going around the track, and they said some – they called it the lap, something the lap. Yeah. Chuck, you don't I remember don't this? I didn't watch the pre-race of the Daytona 500. It was like right before the pace laps. It wasn't like Again, I started watching on like lap three, like I do every year. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, so yeah. I always miss the start. Yeah. Chuck, you got another? If y'all remember this? Yeah. Um, shout out to Eric Almarola for inadvertently screwing Kyle Larson out of three races in a row at the beginning of the year. Um he wrecked with six Three? laps to go. Well, not maybe not screwing him out of, but screwing him over. Uh, he wrecked with six to go at Vegas, and Larson lost to Byron. That shouldn't have been a caution. And, and the first overtime, uh, Larson had gotten the lead from Byron at Phoenix, and then Almarola wrecked, and uh, Byron got him on the second one. And right. then the third race after that was Almarola deciding to stay out on 100 million year old tires and blowing a tire in front of him at Atlanta. So uh, Almirola was batting a thousand to begin the year, and um, didn't he get into Travis Pastrana and wreck him at uh, Daytona? Yeah, he hooked Pastrana into Larson on the last lap. That was four. Kyle wasn't no, I guess win Auto that Four out of the first five. Four out of the first five. Yeah, the yeah. The, the, the motor. Did Eric Almirola blow Kyle Larson's engine up at, at California. He might have. I got one he more. Hey, um, y'all remember when it snowed at California? <laughs> yeah. That. What was yeah. that? Um, yeah. Um. Is everybody got them? Y'all remember? I got one That's, more. Okay. The, the yeah. random tire that fell off of the 78 car at Martinsville and just sat there for 10 laps because nobody could see it. Well, I remember that because I've I never have, been I more irate in my life watching that shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, here we go. This is the the ultimate. Y'all remember when those people on Saturday night in Chicago snuck onto the track and did burnouts and Dude. had Fast and the Furious <laughs> Chicago nights? <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, See, I was God. I was still on the shitting on Chicago train at that point. So when it started going across social media, I was like, "Dad, look at this! They couldn't even build the track good enough. They got pedestrians on the track." And my dad and I were laughing at it, and then we looked like clowns a day later when the race was yeah. actually good. Yeah. So um, that was uh, that was y'all remember that? Y'all remember when that guy did the double? Oh, like, you! Oh, yeah. I was like, "That's <laughs> was next like, That's year, Kyle's dumbass." Doing it next year, what are you talking about? Ah, oh, fuck, Kyle! I did it first. Yeah, Seth did the double. That 
That's yeah, you so kind of did the award double point five because you stayed for the Xfinity race. God, yeah, which ended at like eleven. <laughs> yeah. God bless. Seth, how many? That's like fourteen hundred <laughs> miles worth of racing you yeah. saw in about thirty six hours. Well, t- I'd call it um like thirteen fifty because he did miss 13, like the first twenty eight. I missed the oh first seventy two miles. Well, we did this math. Um, we did this math when it happened. Yeah, I, I missed feel like the you first... made up for it driving from Indiana to fucking Charlotte. I, I mean... forgot you drove. What the hell? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you're a psycho. Uh, yeah, I, dude, I totally forgot that you did the double. <laughs> like, and it was covered by Jeff Gluck in a kind of yeah, uh, or at least promoted. It was promoted by, by Jeff, Jeff Gluck. Gluck. Yeah, I remember. I remember. No, real quick. The the funniest thing I remember reading through some of the comments on that. And someone goes, someone tweeted a reply and said, they need to interview him on TV. And I'm sitting there thinking like, what the fuck would I say on TV? <laughs> like, no, terrible idea. <laughs> oh, I got yeah. one more. Y'all remember when Noah Gregson just plowed the inside wall at North Wilkesboro in the open and ended up taking out like five cars. Y'all remember when Noah Gregson... Made it? Y'all remember when Noah well, Gregson wrecked six times at the Chicago street? Course? Like four of them into the same wall. I yeah. know. We were standing right there. <laughs> we, we, we almost threw our hats for a What hat did trip. I say to Aaron no, we, Kai? <laughs> we literally, we were about to throw our hats onto the track after he did it the third time. I was, I said that me and dad and Nate and Aaron were watching. I said, dude, if he baconators that wall one more fucking time. Dude. Wendy's got their money's worth that day, man. <laughs> they did. Dude, and here's and here's proof that sponsorship works. Seth and I went and got Baconators the night of the Chicago Street Race. We certainly did. <laughs> we oh, drove 25 man. minutes out of our way <laughs> to get some Baconators <laughs> because oh Noah God. Gregson hit that damn wall. Yep. It happened. <laughs> it, it did happen. Uh, oh, what man. also happened is Seth and I Walking back to the car after a farce of an Xfinity race at Talladega, we were miserable. And this uh, middle-aged lady was like, why the long faces? And then flashed us. <laughs> because Talladega. I don't remember that at all. You don't remember that? <laughs> no. Man. I, I literally, she did it, and I turned around and go, there you go, Seth. I don't remember that at all. Oh, man. I was probably hammered, though. Let's be Dow real. Dow is a weird place, man. It is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. So, the uh, the moment we've all been waiting for. Um, our dumbass of the year. We're going to do that before favorite track moment? Yeah. Because we'll, cause we'll okay. kind of. Yeah. That's fair. Spoilers. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Who wants to go first? I go first. All right. So I have a moment, a driver, and then a podcast moment. I'll start with my podcast moment. Over in someone's (laughs) earnest brownie. All right. Yeah. I'll start with my podcast moment. Dumbass podcast moment of the year has to be the buddy pulley. You know what this is. (laughs) Shout out to all the Riley Reed stands out there. Yep. What a dumbass. Um I don't need to explain that one. It explains itself. Dumbass hey, driver hey, of the year. I will give myself the dumbass award for that as well because I'll say it. Because Riley Reed stands are not dumbasses. Oh, God. All right. Noted. Moving on. Noted. Um, I'm going to leave. I have another one for driver, but I'm going to leave that on the table for somebody else. So uh, Tyler Reddick. For whatever the hell he pulled in the Southern 500 when Kevin Harvick pitted and he decided, oh, let me just stop in the middle of the racetrack past the pit entrance. I bet I could make it down there. And then proceeded to blame Ryan Newman for for causing the caution. Dude, Tyler Reddick was the, that was the epitome of the meme of leaving the house at 8.04, hoping to make it to work by 8 (laughs) o'clock. That was exactly what that was. I will give it to Tyler though. I will give it to Tyler. I wanted to wreck Ryan Newman at that point too, but not the right time to do it. Yeah. <laughs> like, God, what are you doing, Tyler? So yeah. And then dumbass moment. I'm really gonna give it to an entire fan base. And um 
they just so happened to be the fan base of the nine car when they tried to say that Chase didn't intentionally right hook Denny Hamlin in the Coke 600. Hang on, hang on. No matter if I agree with what you said or not, what that what the record showed that Chase Folsom said that Seth Dolby and Buddy Foley did not say that. <laughs> I don't care. I'll say it. I watched it happen. He was wearing white gloves, and I saw him turn left on a straightaway and right hook the 11. And there was people out there defending it when every single aspect of the situation blatantly showed that Chase right hooked him. Oh, no, he didn't. Then he came up. What race were you watching? Chase Elliott turns left. Or Mike Joy. (laughs) Or Mike Joy saying, did Brad get into him? And Boyer was like, no. No, he didn't. (laughs) No, he didn't. So yeah, there we go. Y'all, y'all can go now. Okay, Seth. My dumbass driver of the year is Chase Elliott. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Let the record reflect it. Buddy Pulley didn't say that. I did not say that. No, so Buddy Pulley said did- that. Hey, I never called Chase Elliott a dumbass. I called his fans dumbasses. That's probably That's worse. <laughs> That's Charles probably Entertainment. Worse. <laughs> Charles <laughs> Entertainment. Folsom didn't say that. Seth Dolby said that, and I will explain why. I'd like to revoke my sundress and give it to Chase Elliott. <laughs> fucking, fucking Gomer. <laughs> just, just, just save us. You are anyway, you are pansy. Ahead. Anyway, balance the powers of the world. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it's it's two weeks into the season. You you can go a couple weeks without snowboarding, Chase. I'm just gonna say that. There we go. But even then, even then, you have a chance have a chance and you just you just can't keep your little head on your little shoulders and you had to wreck denny hamlin look i've wanted to wreck denny hamlin too a handful of times that guy gets on my nerves but like not like that you could have literally let him go and punted him into the next corner and no one would have cared this is true that's fair Speaking of Denny Hamlin, not to get off topic, but I just thought about this real quick. Y'all remember when they threw a cucumber at him after he went at Bristol? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, I totally forgot about that. Totally anyway. Forgot about that. Back to uh back to dumbass. Um so I have I have uh three. <laughs> uh, really it's four, but two of them they, they go together. Uh, one Cody Ware. Yeah. Um, obviously. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't um, understand that one, buddy. Would you like to explain? No. Yeah, he didn't come <laughs> with us to this comedy store in L.A., and then also he hits women, so that's bad. <laughs> like, it, well, okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna yeah. go. I'm not gonna. Well, actually, get there on that one. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. There's that, obviously. That's dumbass of the century award right there. Um, Sheldon Creed and Austin Hill for not uh, what was that race? Martinsville. For Darlington. For both wrecking in the exact same manner. Unrelated. (laughs) And causing the biggest wreck at Darlington I've ever seen. And ruining and wrecking Every Kevin Harvick throwback in the Kevin Harvick 200 at Darlington while driving yeah. Kevin Harvick throwbacks. You guys are certified dumbasses. Yeah, that All did right. happen, didn't it? Yeah. And then my last dumbass, well deserved. He did not redeem himself. He will never redeem himself because did y'all see that shit that Harrison Burton did at Phoenix? Because I surely fucking did. And at the time, I was joking about it because I'm like, you know what, Kevin, he's had a couple opportunities. Surely he'll get one. And here we are. Season's over. I have many brokenhearted races. And you know what? I don't have sympathy for Harrison Burton. Fuck Harrison Burton because did y'all see that shit he did at Phoenix? Austin Kevin Harvick, the win. Dumbass. Hey, y'all remember that moment when Harrison Burton apologized to Buddy and gave him a hug? Do you remember that time five seconds after that happened when I said, redeem yourself and I'll forgive you? 
Or no, well, I didn't. Um, no, I didn't. I don't say remember that. that at all. I did I not say that. that. I said to him, I said to him, when Kevin wins, I'll forgive you. That's what I said. Well, um, yeah, you did say that actually. Since we just went through the whole dumbass segment and nobody mentioned it, I thought someone would. Kyle Larson plowed the barrels at Homestead. Yeah, like that. he uh, did do that. I mean, that that's pretty dumbass worthy. I know it just happened, so it's like not as funny, but those are fish pellets to our those are fish pellets to our moose dong. Like. <laughs> What? Ultimately, it didn't mean anything. <laughs> That's why it doesn't rank as high on the list. It's still funny. Um, it is I just, fig- I just figured I'd throw it out there since I thought someone might mention it. The Tyler Reddick one's still better. Anyway, we can move on. There's a lot of dumbasses. There's a lot of dumbasses. There's always a lot of dumbasses out there in the world. Um, and congratulations to all of them because you will get your smallies in the mail. Denny, you, yours will be delivered by UPS. Everybody else's will be delivered by the United States Postal Service. <laughs> um, All righty. So, yeah, with that, um, our favorite moment at the racetrack this year, and this could kind of just be an open segment. Okay, yes, we all had a so, terrible time at the races this year. So <laughs> I, had, I had two picked out for sure, but there was many if we have time, but... My Go honorable mention goes to the entire Bristol weekend, Bristol night race weekend. I didn't go to the dirt race. Um, so man. much, so much fun. Yeah. Why would I go to that race? Um, so much fun stuff happened. We got me and buddy. were like losing our shit when Dale jr. Took the lead in the Xfinity race. Oh my God, yeah. That was I, awesome. I, and then he broke his phone or something. He smacked it on the ground. I did, I did break up. my phone at Bristol when Dale jr. Caught on fire. You broke um, your phone I twice also during know. races this year. Huh? Yeah. What? Yeah. He you broke your phone broke twice, your phone twice during races this year. Uh, no. Oh, I mean, I guess technically yes, but one was malicious. One was not, um, and like one was also accidental i was um and yeah i i don't feel bad because fuck you abby um but i also yelled in her face about 74 times that night. oh Dale fucking <laughs> junior that's her fault for continuing to hold the camera in our faces that is very true yeah. she, just, she was asking for it um also that weekend uh i will never forget got this food poisoning and <laughs> puked all over the goddamn place oh my gosh i did um yeah um, so also yeah. so i will never forget this and i don't remember what the exact score was but it was like 4 30 in the morning and me and buddy were cornhole partners against caleb well my caleb not y'all's caleb and shout out to our buddy lucas we made yeah um they were on a team and we're playing cornhole and buddy runs up to me and i'm like what do you want me to do he says well if you put it on the board, we keep playing. If you miss, they win. I said, well, what happens if I put it in the hole? He said, I have no fucking clue. <laughs> and I was like, all right. So I walked back to my side and I threw that cornhole bag and it goes in. And he's like, I did, dude, I, we was, won. We was, won. Was, and I'm like, it was four in the morning and I was 29 beers deep in the day. <laughs> Like and I just watched the worst race of my life, and Kevin Arvid run a street stock painted like the gear wrench car. I was oh having a rough day. We were like, "Wait a minute, do the math, do the math." Holy shit, we just won! So that was awesome. And I also we didn't know at the time, but I was concussed because about three hours earlier, I was like, "I'm gonna flip out of this chair," and y'all were like, mm. Don't and do I was that. like, you want some help? And I was like, I'm gonna. And then Buddy said, you want some help? And I was like, sure. And Buddy goes, Psh! and down the hill I went. Bam, back of the head on the ground. And um, I drove home the next day. Shouldn't have. Uh, that whole weekend was awesome. That I was think a, uh, that was a uh, quite the weekend for sure. We need, we need to do that again next year. Um, but I think sentimental purposes my favorite moment at the racetrack this year was the fact that i met carl edwards finally he was my childhood hero and i'd never met him and uh got to meet him at darlington this year and he signed 
please pause 10 seconds for station identification. Sign this badass painting I did freshman year of high school. So uh, that's cool. Shout out to Carl. He you're When he saw it. The, you're going to have to watch the video version to see what the painting is. That just drives views up. Oh, yeah. Right. But when he he literally walks off the fan stage and he's he's gonna he was like everybody wanted his autograph and he saw my painting and he goes that's cool don't let me miss that I want to sign that and I was like yes that is awesome so I'll Raymond shut up I'll shut up now y'all can go ahead yeah sorry buddy um oh god southern. 500. Oh, God. Fuck that race, dude. I've been waiting on it and waiting on it. Did you just it. take the Darlington Xfinity race? Nope. Like, that was fun. It was all right. Waiting on it and waiting on it and waiting on it and waiting on it. I <laughs> genuinely thought it wasn't ever going to happen. Like, dead ass. I was like, this is not, this is never happening. It's not He's possible. talking about Kyle Larson winning the Southern 500. I am. I am indeed talking about Kyle Larson winning the Southern 500. And literally, so like, I had a pretty good year this year at the racetrack. I don't know if anyone noticed. I had a pretty good year. But Kyle won the All-Star race. That was the fifth time I'd seen him win this season at the racetrack. Obviously, that's a, anyway. And I literally said, <laughs> well, still got to win the Southern 500. <laughs> He did. He did. He said in order for this year to be a success, he's still got to win the Southern 500. And everyone and rolled their eyes. And I, I was like, to, I wanted to be happy for you so bad. I tried really hard. He did. And even then I still failed miserably to be happy for you. Um, I was beyond devastated at that race. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there's always a lot of good moments at the racetrack. Um, it's always a good day at the racetrack some days, except for except for the Southern 500. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of, there's one in particular. Martinsville in the fall was a fun time. Um, Talladega is always a, a trip. That was, uh, I don't think we can tell that story. <laughs> That's quintessential tile day i guess la was awesome um hanging hanging out with garage guy chase uh, we got we stayed in a hostel um and we didn't know that when we booked the hotel room <laughs> and we kind of showed up we're like oh shit there's other people in this room <laughs> um and yeah that was uh sh shout out to everybody we stayed with that weekend because that was real sketchy but real fun um we get we got we lucked out with that but we got to uh Went to the comedy store in LA. We saw Tom Segura in the in the bathroom. That was interesting. <laughs> um, we uh we saw Young Gravy and I he took a sip of my Celsius. Um and we got to hang out with Ricky Stenhouse um uh, in Talladega. His wife called him Dick and he's endearingly, <laughs> so now we call Ricky Dick. Um a lot of those moments, obviously the Harrison Burton moment at uh at Wilkesboro. Underrated was the moment when before that when Seth yelled at sexually harassed Todd Gillen <laughs> by um he yelled, Todd, you're a hot as fuck. And him and his girlfriend and him turn around and look at you like, What the fuck did he just say? Like Todd Gillen's never been told that in his life. <laughs> in like the open air i don't think so that that was a good one. Oh, uh, and then just i i think back to uh the when we were um telling ross he was number one at the weight model race that was fun for every lap and there was a guy who yelled at us and said you paid 40 dollars to do that and i turned back around and i said no i paid 500 dollars for the whole weekend to do that <laughs> <laughs> That was that was fun. Um, Wilkesboro in general was just a great time. Uh, shout out to uh, Otis oh. Otis for POTUS and his lizard hat. Um, and Chicago. that same guy, that same guy also said, "I don't know why y'all are complaining about him." Dale Senior used to race the same way, and I turned around and said, "Dale Senior won races." That's true. That's true. I I, I didn't. Yeah. 
Cross one twice this Jesse, year. Yeah. Um, At that Wilkes point, Pro, had... seeing the 29 car was very special. Um, that seeing it in such a it's such a pivotal car paint scheme moment in NASCAR and then being at Wilkesboro in kind of in the same vein. So that was cool. And then obviously top of the heap was Kevin leading laps at Phoenix for me. Um, and just being able to soak in that last race in the entire weekend. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. I guess uh, honorable mention for me was the whole aftermath of doing the double thing. That was that was yeah. interesting. Yeah, you did fucking double. <laughs> I did. I I don't <laughs> I don't mean to keep bringing it up like oh guys that was so cool, but like I don't know. It's weird. Like That's I don't know. Cool. Look, I've never been relevant before in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> It's the only time in my entire life I've been relevant, and it only lasted for like a day. But <laughs> still, it was fun. Um. Anyway, yeah. So that was fun. Yep. A- any any others? Any, anybody got anything? Um. No. I mean, any time that really involved you two, I was having a bad day. Um. Same. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. No. I mean. I'm sure there's many moments that we forget and we reminisce on, but as the ones off the top of my head. I did. Um, well, no, I'm not going to say that. Yeah, you can't say that. I don't know what you're going to say, but you can't say that. I can't um, say that. Other it hasn't that, stopped you yet. <laughs> yeah. other well, that, well, I'll just I'm, be I'm, very. I'll just be very vague and say that I accidentally got Seth into the Wake County car store race for free. Yeah, that's crazy. That did happen. That's crazy. That was a fun night. That was a fun night, too. That was fun. Yeah. Except for the fact that you got hit and run. Oh, yeah. I did get hit and ran that night. And wow. we sat on the and we sat on the side of the interstate eating pizza for like an hour waiting on the cops to come. Yeah. Shout out to Raleigh PD for taking their hot damn sweet time. It was a um, busy night, I guess. I guess. Yeah, I go to leave um, the track, and I'm like, "Where are you at?" And you're like, uh, "Plot twist, I'm on the side of 540. I got hit and run." And I'm like, "Oh." Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Shout out to uh, shout out to uh, Volkswagen Jetta because he can bounce off a of Jersey Bear, and he's got with the recoil of Billy Eilish, and keep on kicking. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, I'm glad you didn't use the name you gave your car. Um yeah no we can't also can't say that um yeah so with that what are we looking forward most to in 2024 i think i said that sentence wrong but what are we looking forward to most um i don't know it might be this little tiny minute event called the daytona 500 that we're all going to for the first time correct oh yeah yeah. yeah. Wait, have you guys have you guys been to the 500? No. Oh, really? No. I didn't know that. Yeah, no, I've you... never been. I've never been to Daytona. Period. Oh, oh shit! We've been to so Daytona. We're all popping our Daytona cherries. Yeah. That that whole week for me is actually going to be awesome because my grandparents live down there, so I'm actually tentatively waiting on the schedules to come out, but I should be going to see the Lucas Oil Late Models at East Bay in Tampa. And then going to see the high limit sprint cars at East Bay and Tampa in the week leading up to going to Daytona. So that's going to be oh, a fun week. That's nice. fucking baller. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. We're going to go. Seth and I officially, we got our tickets and we're going to the great American race. Chuck's obviously going to be there as well. Um, and we're, uh, we're going to be down there for the duels and pending. I won't be race. there for the duels uh huh? probably truck race probably truck race yeah i gotta um, go to a truck race watch them tear it up i can't yeah literally <laughs> literally yeah. um obviously an xfinity and then the great american race finally 20 yeah. years of trying 20 years of frustration seth and i and chuck and all well chuck's not even 20 years old uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> we're, we're going to the 
we're going to the Daytona 500. So, it's 19 almost, years of trying. Yeah, almost yeah. 20 years of frustration. Um, it's just one of those things where it's like, it's like we go to so many races. It's like, how? Why have we not? How done have we this not yet? been? We went to Phoenix. We're yeah. all the way to. We just got back. From I've been to Phoenix twice. Well, we've to, been we've been to Daytona a bunch of times. <laughs> I went to the L.A. Coliseum before I went to the Daytona 500. Well, I'll say this. I think this actually might be a little crazier. I drove from North Carolina to Phoenix twice before I went to the Daytona 500, buddy. So, and a 68 Pulley. Chevy pickup. God bless. Buddy Pulley, Coca-Cola 600 lifer, went to the Indy 500 before he went to the Coke 600. Or the, sorry, <laughs> the Daytona 500. That is, that is crazy. That is, oh shit, yeah, that actually is. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty crazy. I hope I enjoy the Daytona 500 more than I enjoyed the Indy 500. It's I Daytona. hope I enjoy the Daytona 500. I hope I enjoy the Daytona 500. Um, so what are we looking forward to competition-wise, I guess? Oh, well, mine's not even NASCAR-related. Well, give us a well, NASCAR. What is it? Well, I already know I'm going to Berlin next year. Okay, then give us your NASCAR. <laughs> I mean, like, more of, like, what are we looking forward to? What's SRX. You know? okay. What do you want to see out of the Cup Series? Oh, man, I just... I hope that, you know, like that tolerable definition I gave earlier about the short tracks. Like yeah. last year I was miserable and wouldn't watch and This year I was miserable and still would reluctantly. I hope I just like willingly sit there and watch the short tracks and be miserable next year. Uh, I, j I just hope they improve some. I hope they at least try the horsepower thing. The fact that they're trying to get rid of shifting, in my opinion, is a step in the right direction. I just want them to suck less. <laughs> that's that's sure. that's all it is. Yeah. And I I look forward to watching Xfinity races until then. Can confirm. I just want to see improvement. I I'm not looking for it all get back at once. I just want to see it to be heading in the right direction. I am looking forward to Shane Van Gisbergen. In all his in all his muscular calf big dick new zealand glory um cars tour cars, cars tour up xfinity truck don't do arca um don't do arca. just everything he can get his get in i want to see him do it um that is by far my most anticipated um uh, uh event of 2024 all right Okay, cool. Do we want to yeah. do way too early cup predictions next year? Fuck it. Yeah, who's going to win the 2024 Cup Series Championship? Chuck. <clears throat> Christopher Bell. Ross Chastain. Man, I was thinking about doing Bell. I'm going to go with... Um, Um, man, this is tough. Because you want to, you, Denny, I lost all faith. Truex, I don't see him having another year like this and definitely not having a better one. Um, I think I'm going to go with, uh, oh, man. We're going to go with uh... – Pick one. I know. I'm I'm drawing a blank on, like, who races. It's late. <laughs> We're going to go with uh, – what's that guy's name? Um, that narrows it down. Fuck. Just he's, say Chris um, Buescher and move no, on. No, he, um, he's the greatest race car driver in the world. Yeah, I don't Kyle know what you're talking about. No, it's gonna be an even numbered year. He's yeah. gonna drive like an idiot again. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna. I think I'm just gonna 
just going to pick Kyle Larson until he wins it again. If I can think of one even number, Gary did pretty good. Anyway, um, so that's not in been, Cup. Uh, <laughs> Huh? And I said not in cup. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> that was um, yeah. Um I'm also I'm also excited to see what Kevin Harvick does in 2024. Um in the booth and then also like what he decides to race. I mean, of course you are. Well, okay. Well, f- Did Fine. you hear that they're, he's What's the thinking point about, of having a podcast if I can't talk about Did you hear that he's about. thinking about running multiple late model stock cars full time? Yeah. Which would mean they're going to put a full time driver in one and then the other one's going to be an all star car. Yep, that is what he said. He also um, said maybe run an Xfinity race. Yeah, he also said he'd run some super late model races. Yep. He did because say they because they just because they did just buy one of those and they're putting Ryan yeah. Priest in it for the snowball. Um, and manufacturer so yeah. won't matter, so we could see all sorts of different people in those cars. Well, yeah, he said probably uh, a lot of KHI management guys don't yeah. be what the all star car is. So, um, kind of a and kind of getting guys into the cars tour. Um, like hopefully, him names, hopefully like himself at Wilkesboro would be cool. I would imagine, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, twenty twenty three. Junior should pull out three late model stocks at Wilkesboro next year. We'll that talk about nice. that next year. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll get there. Yeah, so uh, twenty twenty three. Um, here's to you, I guess. You were uh, serviceable. Cheers. You made me really. You made me really mad. Here's a pink lemonade. Here's a water. Here's a red solo cup with a uh, gold schlager and sun drop. So that's the kind of that's the kind of uh shitty drink that you uh, that you get to send off to. Yeah, you know why I pick pink lemonade? Because it's what's in your cup. Because who the fuck drinks pink lemonade? Who cares? Just like this season. You <laughs> You're drinking pink lemonade. Yeah, Don't it's, have the it's what, you, baby. That's it's what it. you drink when there's nothing else to have. Ugh. Let's not let this podcast devolve even further. Shout, like right. I said, shout out Kyle Petty. You've never been wrong in your entire life. I live my truth. And didn't, all right. didn't beat all of Yeah, Merry guys. Thanksgiving. This, happy Christmas. Bye. This has been the Big Motor Small Blade Podcast. He's been... Denny Hamlin. I wasn't actually pointing. Thank you guys. Also, everybody for listening and watching all season long. I know that none of you have made it to the end of this to hear me say thank you because Chuck and Seth always go off on a fucking tangent that no one gives a shit about. You were the one that kept adding to this episode. (laughs) Oh, no. Uh, That's simply not true. Um, And just thank you, everybody, for uh, every any support you ever given us and listening, sharing, rating, liking, commenting, everything. Thank you guys.